Alright, so before I put the finishing touches on my last video, I had already begun brainstorming what to do for my next one, and even started a script for a non-Witcher related video. However, after a very helpful conversation with a show-watching friend of mine, I decided to push that episode back a little bit to answer this urgent and pretty obvious question. What exactly is a Witcher? Now, this question caught me off guard, because the Witcher series has been with me for over a decade now, and I just took it for granted that people would understand what makes Geralt and his kind so special after watching the eight episode season. Now I realize, though, that season one brushes over or leaves out many details that are known to book readers and game players, so let's summarize and uh, try to fill in the gaps. Put most simply, Witchers are mutated monster hunters, but even the most casual show watcher is probably already aware of that. Let's get a little more specific. Witchers are members of an exclusive society who act as the designated monster hunters on many parts of the continent. Entry into this society and profession requires extensive training, skill, and most important to this discussion, mutations. These mutations give witchers a veritable laundry list of superhuman abilities, such as enhanced speed, strength, endurance, senses, and reflexes, cat-like eyes with enhanced night vision, increased longevity and slowed aging, accelerated healing, and resistance to diseases and poisons, among others. Their resistance to poison also allows witchers to brew and ingest special potions that can enhance their abilities even further, but would kill a normal human before any benefits would be seen. This is why Geralt's appearance changes quite a bit after drinking a potion on the show, with his skin turning pale white and his veins becoming more prominent and darker. His eyes turning black isn't actually a side effect, it's one of the intended causes of the potion that he drank, it allows him to see in the dark better. But with all of these abilities comes at least one permanent physical side effect, sterility. As if that weren't bad enough, to gain these abilities, young witcher trainees must undergo several horribly painful and traumatizing processes known as the Trials. The most well known of these, The Trial of the Grasses, is described in an excerpt from Carla Demetia Crest's The Trial of the Grasses and Other Secret Witcher Practices Seen with My Own Eyes. <clears throat> On the third day, all the children died save one, a male barely ten. Hitherto agitated by a sudden madness, he fell at once into deep stupor. His eyes took on a glassy gaze, incessantly with his hands did he clutch at clothing or brandishing them in the air as if desirous of catching a quill. His breathing grew loud and hoarse, sweat cold, clammy, and malodorous appeared on his skin. Then he was once more given elixir through the vein, and the seizure it did return. This time a nosebleed did ensue, coughing turned to vomiting, after which the male weakened entirely and became inert. For two more days did symptoms not subside. The child's skin, hitherto drenched in sweat, grew dry and hot, the pulse ceased to be full and firm, albeit remaining of average strength, slow rather than fast. No more did he wake, nor did he scream. Finally came the seventh day. The male awoke and opened his eyes, and his eyes were those of a viper. Only three in ten of every boy that have undergone this trial are said to survive it. Some of these lucky survivors may be exposed to even further experimentation, these special experiments led to Geralt's extra-enhanced abilities, his trademark white hair, and the deaths of all other members of his test group. All three of those things set him apart quite a lot. Fans and characters in the books, even witchers, often share a common misconception about witchers, believing that the mutations strip them of emotion. But I'd argue that this is actually quite far from the truth and it's rebutted many times throughout the stories. Witchers, and perhaps Geralt in particular, are very emotional beings and will often act in sentimental or excited ways, given the right circumstances, but they tend to repress the expression of these feelings. This repression can be traced to four 
fairly understandable reasons. Their past trauma, desensitization, ostracization, and their professional conduct. So, along with the literal poisoning that they receive, the training of witchers involves other physical, magical, and psychological hardships that they must endure in order to become more effective fighters, but all of which leave them very traumatized. This causes them to develop very deep psychological pain, a distrust of others, and the belief that disciplining their emotions will grant them greater control. A normal human can become desensitized from just one lifetime's worth of death, but witchers can survive for several lifetimes. Furthermore, the training and profession of the witchers will naturally lead to them experiencing more death and suffering than most humans do, which leads to them living through a tremendous amount of loss. Witchers are also distrusted by regular humans, who fear the mysterious and intimidating mutants with their altered appearances. As such, witchers are erroneously lumped in with non-humans such as dwarves and elves, so they generally tend to keep to themselves, and they never spend much time in one place, as their profession necessitates that they spread their small numbers to combat monsters wherever they arise. This social isolation makes them less willing and less able to make deeper attachments, so it's usually easier to just put up a strong front. Finally, witchers have a professional reputation and a specific code of conduct. Dealing with desperate and troubled people is business as usual for witchers, and their job is to kill monsters for coin. As such, they can come off as callous or uncaring when they haggle or demand upfront payment for their work, but they themselves are often cheated by customers when they loosen their terms, and again, have to experience this more often and for a longer time than most people. Something that is a little less clear is whether the ability to use signs is also caused or enhanced by the mutations or if regular humans could learn signs up to a similar capacity given the same amount of time and training intensity as a witcher. It is possible that the mutations would somehow unlock or amplify existing magical talent, but since we know that performing magic can also take a lot of stamina, it could just be that the witcher's enhanced physical traits can compensate for a lack of natural magical talent. In any case, the mutations definitely don't seem to impair magical abilities in any way. The signs that witchers are capable of casting are simple compared to the impressive feats of sorcerers, but they are still so effective that witchers will usually only use one-handed weapons and go shieldless to enable the use of their signs in combat. The effects of these can range from protection, to pushing something away, to lighting a fire, to minor psychic abilities like calming someone down but they do require making a motion or tracing in the air with the hand. Speaking of combat, the signature weapon of the Witcher is a sword, and Witchers typically carry two with them, steel for humans and natural creatures, and silver for supernatural ones. Along with the potions and signs, the sword grants Witchers a lot of offensive and defensive versatility, which is key since the creatures they slay come in all different shapes sizes, and temperaments. Witchers also carry a magic medallion that vibrates in the presence of magic, making them a very useful tool in a witcher's line of work. These medallions are decorated with the symbol of the witcher's school, which denotes the specific group that trained the witcher, usually at some specific location. Geralt belongs to the wolf school, as does his mentor, Vesemir, who is mentioned a couple times in the show. This school was based out of Kaer Morin, which is located in Cadwin, but there were other witcher schools named for other animals, such as the cat and the griffith, and the games also introduce other schools like the bear and the viper. However, witcher schools seem to be in decline, and that's because witchers have been the victims of a number of attacks from humans who distrust them, making it difficult for witchers to gather in any significant numbers. Vesemir was a survivor of one such attack, that effectively destroyed the School of the Wolf, and though Geralt and other members do still exist out there, so much knowledge on the creation and training of witchers was lost that the School of the Wolf seems doomed to end with the deaths of the remaining members. I think I will wrap my explanation up there for today. I hope you were able to learn something about the nature and background of witchers from this video. 
If you disagree with anything I brought up, or if you learned something new, please leave me a comment. Either way, please leave me a like and subscribe for more content in the future. As I said at the start of this video, I think my next video will not be related to The Witcher, but it may interest you anyways, and I know I'll have a lot of fun making it. This has been The Laughing Storm, and I hope to see you soon.